simulation. Woo! Here we go. Boom! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. Very excited to be talking about holding space. We have Ori Shapiro joining us on the show. Thank you. I'm nervous. <laughs> we got you, my brother. I'm right. so pumped for this. Thanks. So excited. For those that don't know Ori's background, Ori Shapiro is a personal growth coach leading one on one supportive sessions and holding space with clients for growth healing and conscious evolution. He is also exploring sitting with bigger groups of five to 15 people as well. And you can find the links in the bio below to oriholdingspace.com as well as his Facebook page. Ori, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? Oh my gosh. Um, better and better. Like, Um, it feels like, it feels kind of surreal how that question has transformed for me. Like, my experience of it these days is almost like the choices I make shift me into the better timeline, if you yeah. will. So. Tell us more about that. Um, Like my life just feels more and more clean, like more and more pristine, you know, like I've exercised like discernment, you know, in my relationships and uh, my alignment to my purpose and all these things. And now like, you know, like maybe I'll have like some bad conversation with someone and then that night I might have a bad dream. And that'll just remind me that those exist so it feels like you can you can really garden your life like you can really garden your consciousness and that feels internal and external somehow um if that makes sense mm -hmm. so we can get to a state of our own deepest alignment with our divine purpose and the more that we get in that direction the more that it's reflected in our day to day, moment to moment. And we author our own positive or negative worldview at every moment as well. Yes. And then choosing the positive has made a big difference. Seeing the good has made a big difference. Yeah, and also facing the negative. Just yeah. like meeting it. <laughs> meeting it. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, for me, it was grieving. For me, it was journaling and grieving. Um, this takes us directly into the journey. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. For me, it was journaling and grieving. Uh, Where were you born? I was born in Mountain View. In Mountain View. Okay. And you spent most of your life growing up here in the Bay Area. That's right. Okay. Um, and who were you growing up, even pre the journaling and grieving? Who were you growing up? Who was I? Yeah. Who oh, you? my gosh. I was... Um, just like a nice chubby kid. Um, and I had a lot of sides and I could connect with a lot of people. You know, like I could be athletic and play some basketball and be cool. And then also like inside I was like a really sensitive softy. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, come on, don't laugh. Laughing in the best way possible because I feel ory on that. It feels good it that was, you laugh. Yeah. Like me, I felt similarly in some ways. Please keep going, yeah. Keep going about what? Yeah, about what? So yeah, you had this like ability to tap into like basketball and hang with that crowd and be soft and hang with other crowds so you could like ebb and flow between different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so interesting. Like, I'm just remembering this now, but like, you know, I, I could see like a grandma on the street and just like be, the nicest, most sensitive guy, and it was so authentic. It was who I was. And then, like, in elementary school, I could be, like, with my friends, like, peeing on the slide and, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and, like, doing all these bad things. So, <laughs> so it was interesting. Yeah. Damn. That's so, it, that is, you're, you're, I think you're unpacking for many people what 
the dichotomy between that between their two like most light youthful sides and most dark youthful sides was because so many young people did those like kind of like darker things like yeah um, but also did the light things and to juxtapose those I think is beautiful yeah it makes me think of like you could say our nature or like our soul or like our intention for incarnating maybe and then also juxtapose with the fields the fields of consciousness the fields of the people around us the just it's in the air it's in the, um, mm -hmm. to act that way so that's why people will go to an ashram or to a cave and realize something but I think part of my path has been about moving within the fields and like leveling up the fields to be more spiritually realized mm -hmm. yeah okay so right before we get there let's hit on um, what was going on in your life around the time that you started journaling and grieving what triggered that yeah um well i guess you could say i had like a spiritual awakening toward the end of uh being a college basketball player at foothill college is that d de Anza? is that that area? it's like a sister school of the okay cool and so i was a basketball player there and then um but I had, uh, I had this spiritual awakening toward the end of all of that. And um, it was pretty cool. And then after basketball, and then I kind of, uh, I thought that was that. I thought it was a cool experience. What was the experience? Yeah, well, I mean, so many tangents, right? Yeah, but yeah. but it, it's a good story. Yes, um, please. Trying to, trying to think of what's relevant in the story. So, I guess you could call it a heart opening. Um, I was like picking up my friend and teammate to go to school, and I was miserable. And mm. me, me and my friend were riding the bench. We mm. weren't we weren't getting playing time mm -hmm. on this team, and we were kind of. He was like the seed of my spirituality. He was like this good kid from Brazil, and so we had that. But um, so I picked him up, and we're going to school, and I was miserable, and. Uh, I, I was particularly miserable. And um, there was this thing in LA, it wasn't on my conscious mind, but there was this event in LA that he was friends with the guy leading it and he was gonna go. And uh, I thought it sounded so cool, but we had our last basketball game of the season. And so that's just not really an option to miss. And when you're riding the bench. But we're riding the bench. <laughs> yeah. And sure. so, so I'm, I'm picking my friend up and I'm miserable, like for whatever reason, like, I'm just like, man, I am so not for going to school right now and going to classes and basketball. And, and then I was like, particularly miserable, you know, it was like pretty unbearable. And, uh, were you dangerous? Uh, that's miserable to the point of being dangerous. Or shut my no, face. I wouldn't say so. Okay. Good. But, um. So yeah, so I'm getting ready to pick him up. And then as I'm being miserable, this thought crosses my mind, like this, the thought of the event in LA. Yeah. And like the transmission of uh, Kyle Cease, who, who was leading it, like on his Facebook about the event. Oh, like you're- Stop it, it was a Kyle Cease event? Yeah. Oh, dope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so, but he, your friend knew about the- My friend knew Kyle Cease. Oh, cool. My friend got he inspired. Was, he, was Im he immigrated from Brazil and he knew Kyle Cease? So, yeah, basically my friend got inspired by Kyle Cease's videos and he made his own, like, putting images and music behind him riffing. Yeah. And then it went viral. It became Kyle Cease's most popular video. So then they became friends and Kyle Cease was like, hey, like, you and a friend can come to this $400 ticket event for free. Uh, oh, this in is LA. game over. You got a skirt. <laughs> so my friend's like sending me his Facebook transmission about the event. He's like, "You're unlimited. We're here to play." Like, blah, blah. and I was like, "Whoa!" Like, I haven't heard this before. Um, but I kind of brushed it off because I was just like, "You can't miss a college basketball game in the last one, too." And age is 21. You're 21 ish. Uh, he, he was probably like 20, and I was like 22. 22, 20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm picking my friend up. I'm miserable, and then. Uh, among the misery, the thought crosses my mind about the event. You know, I was like, 
oh, but that event, you know, like, <laughs> and then I was like, but I can't go. And as soon as I had that thought, then there was this shift where I just realized that I could go. Yeah. I just realized that I could go. <laughs> and um, when that happened, I was decided I was going to go and then changed your life trajectory with that moment. Yeah. I love stuff like that. We live for stuff like that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank that you. moment and you, the choice that you made, yeah, that altered your trajectory. It's massive. And if we can, if other young people that are listening right now have that decision that is like, should I go to the thing that I'm just drudging? Or if there's that moment that I could go and do something that could potentially just change my life trajectory forever, explore that option, pick that option, see what it does for your life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And this felt, this felt orchestrated. This felt like there was a timing to it. It's like I was ready for it or something. But I had that shift and then I became like, completely different state of being like I was just like so light in the heaviness and yeah. uh, you were light in the heaviness after the cease event or before going there the moment when I was miserable the moment I realized I could go to that event somehow then I just transformed and and as I was waiting for my friend I was just like in, I was just like a new man. I was light. I was surrendered, like in the best way. Nice. I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say to my coach, yeah. you know, but th there was just this feeling like, I remember standing up on campus. I was just like, so light. Like, I was standing there and I was just like, letting myself like slouch, if you will. You know, every, everything's tense and you're at school and you're on the basketball, but I was just like, like slouching and I was just like, I was like very open to like the environment and I felt so light and I was like, I don't know what I'm going to say to my coach, but I was like absolutely courageous and it, it was like effortless. It was like, wait a minute, like if he just like yells at me, I'm just like, I care about the team, you know, I care about my coach, I care about everything, my, my heart's open, but like I'm just going to take it, I'm just going to respond. And it was just this shift, it was just this different way of being. And that's, that whole day was pretty magical, you know? There were like four or five girls on campus that I was attracted to, that I thought were uh, hot. And um, I ran into all of them, like kind of magically. Uh, and so it was almost like my heart was communicating on the, it was, mm. the whole thing was mm -hmm. crazy, man. Yeah, so that was my, you could say that was my first spiritual awakening. You went, to campus that day, but do you, did you still go to the event in LA too? Yep. You did? Yeah, a couple of weeks later. Okay, a couple of weeks later you guys went. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, <clears throat> so it was the moment actually in the car where you uh, went from being miserable to knowing that you had authorship of making a decision that you could go that then opened you up to that state of being that day at the, for the for the, both the coach, your coach, your peers, the girls, all that stuff mm -hmm. that opened up for you, and then later you went with your friend a couple weeks later to the cease event. Yeah. And then what did you take from that? That also like the event was incredible. You could say I found that state again. Yeah. And then after basketball as a whole, which was a few weeks following that, then basically over the course of the next couple of years, I opened up to this grief I didn't even know I had. That was like, you could say in my cells and it was like deep and transformative and healing. And I would journal and I would grieve about stuff that happened in that day that seemed small, but whatever my body, I had this ancient well of grief that would get attributed to stuff that was happening. And so I would, I would process this grief. And then over the course of the next couple of years, you, I kind of leveled up my system to be able to hold that state of consciousness from that awakening. Mm. Um, you called it an ancient well of yeah. grief. Damn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, yeah, people have asked me where the grief is from. I mean, honestly, who knows? Uh, maybe it's from our collective. Maybe it's from, uh, you know, my father passed away when I was seven. Maybe mm. it's from that. Because I remember kind of holding and not crying when everyone else was during that. And then I also have 
Like my grandpa's seven siblings were killed by, in the Holocaust. And so there's that ancestry thing. Yeah, yeah there's an energy there, yeah. obviously, that you just inherit somehow. Just a terrible grief that you don't know where it comes from. I'm trying, yeah. to, I'm trying to get this. Yes. And, um, I understand. And, uh, it's an energy, just as much as if it's an idea or, or an abundance of joy. You don't know why. Yes. Uh, uh, and it's similar. Yes. You know, you're suffering uh, the grief of your grandfather who lost seven siblings from the Holocaust. It still just carries on. It's interesting, fascinating. What are we going to do about it? Science is now more and more pointing to the, what ancient wisdom used to just carry with them as an essence. But now science is like, no, there is literally epigenetics that we carry on through transgenerations that are like, yo, my grandfather siblings died in the seven of them died in the holocaust i'm carrying some of that i need to connect to that spiritually and heal so that i don't have these potential subconscious moments that occur unconscious moments that occur in my life yeah yeah these karmic propensities karmic propensities <laughs> damn yeah. I don't know if it has any con connection to what we're talking about, but I heard a story where there was a native tribe of indigenous pe uh, peoples in the, um, the Everglades that had committed suicide in a specific area. And later in life, hundreds of years later, there was a plane crash in which the equivalent number of natives who committed suicide were also in this plane crash in this specific area. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that thought mm -hmm. came from. I, you know, I don't know if it has any connection to the story, but it's you know, the yeah. suggesting these souls that committed suicide also happen to be souls that ended up on this plane destined for you know, cat you know, catastrophe. That's so. the interconnectedness, like that karmic propensity. Uh, go ahead, teach us more about that. I don't know, it's just a word that came through. I okay. Mean, okay. Yeah. So this ancient well that you're grieve. So you, you have to. You're, what what is the process for you of when you find yourself journaling about something that day or something that's ancient in your family's uh, trauma as well? You're journaling about maybe one of those things or both of those things every day for how many minutes? For how long? No. So most of the journaling was about the present. Okay. And it w um, but this ancient grief would get attributed to the present. Or, or journaling about what was real for me, journaling about what I cared about the most about that day, um, and just getting in touch with that and opening and going deep uh, would kind of like, would move the grief. Like, and it, was, it felt so healing. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. What would it, yeah, tell us about what it would do with the feeling of the of the grief because if you're also journaling about things that went if you're in the present and there's something that's really ecstatic you journal about that as well it's funny because less so um for yeah less so i mean it just felt so like like meaty like to do this grieving it felt so real it felt so um it just felt like the most powerful thing I could possibly do. The before and after was like being impaired, like being a drunk person. And then after I would feel like the saint, like I would feel like hypersensitive mm. and like, just like kind of like that awakening I described. So this grieving process was just, I knew how powerful it was. And it was interesting because I developed health issues. I developed hypertension and a fatty mm. liver and I became like a hardcore hypochondriac for like a year and I was bedridden because I, you could say I overdid this grieving because I kind of became addicted to it because it felt so. It sounds like, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it sounds like there's some sort of uh, satisfaction in there, you know? Yeah. So anyway, um, but what it did do is when I did journal about positive stuff, it felt like it was much more, had much more traction, you know, like some, spiritual people or personal growth people talk about like positive thinking or law of attraction and for me doing this remember I talked about facing the darkness earlier mm -hmm. like actually facing our like that stuff is the real like that will take you somewhere yeah and like post grieving if I like did some of that positive thinking or like 
just like envision stuff I'm excited about. It just felt like way more real. It felt like more uh, like I could believe in it. Mm. Mm. Okay, so the recommendation then is that, tell me if this is right, that then when we encounter something that may feel like it makes us uneasy in some way, that if we take a moment to tune into ourselves and think and feel, where is that making me feel uneasy? Why is it making me feel uneasy? Um, how does it actually feel within me? Can I write about it? If I write about it, what does that do? How do I feel after I write about it? Yeah. That kind of a process. Exactly. Exactly, man. Yeah, I would... Uh, my journaling quickly kind of became like very distilled. Like I, I became like uh, better and better at um, finding what was alive and just getting in touch with like what I actually cared about, you know? Mm. And so I wasn't just like, it wasn't like a very mental journal. It was like a very felt journal. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes mm -hmm. over the course of half an hour, I might write four lines, but feel transformed. Mm -hmm. But um, so yeah, that was what went down for me. And then um, what was the, your father passed when you were seven, you said? Yeah. Yeah. What was the issue with, with your father? He got like this rare cancer when I was like seven months old. Oh, seven months? And then died when I, when oh, uh, I oh, was seven. Okay. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. That I mean, that makes significant impact on our lives as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. And and then you grew up with mom then. Yes. Yeah. Grew up with mom. Okay. And she was really stressed about that whole being a single mother and stuff. And so I think. With I th brothers, two and sisters, or. I had two older brothers. Two older brothers. And so I think I was... Three of you with one mom, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That reminds us of Ronnie. Yeah. So, yeah, continue. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to talk about. Who knows? I don't know where to start. Okay, so when um, post-journaling, mm -hmm. this is when you're 22-ish? Yes. Okay, okay. Then what starts coming up for you at that point? You're like, I'm so deeply connecting to the present and how I feel most alive writing about it. What's, going, what's happening in your life at that point? Where is your life going after that? Um, so, after about a year of being bedridden, I landed my dream job as what's called a Z Health trainer. And it's like this neuro health and performance coach. And you know, I took these like expensive certifications in Arizona and Berkeley um, with some of, some of what I thought was the best stuff out there on health and performance. Just really cool stuff about like vision training and like inner ear drills, which is like our balance system, mm -hmm. and proprioceptive drills, which is like a fancy word for joint mobility and breathing training and just like this holistic system with nutrition stuff. And so I became the Z Health trainer and, I, and uh, at, it was my dream job. There was this gym in Berkeley they, where they had the courses. And then I interned there and then I became a trainer there for two years. And then uh, toward the end of that, and, and that was perfect because it was like this, this environment for me to grow, you know? You could say the grieving was like this healing, mm -hmm. um, but coupled with growth, um, and then this gym was like perfect because I could develop my body uh, with all these tools. And then also I could uh, interact with clients where I didn't even know, but I was already starting to hold space, if you will. Uh, and I would go home and I would uh, journal about what happened with my coworkers and with my clients and I would grieve and I would like extract insight and wisdom. And so I was really using this time and I was transforming all the time. I was showing up the next day a little bit different. And so after two years of that, uh, I got the gut feeling um, to leave because it started to feel contracting to mm. this, whatever was emerging through me, this expansive, accelerated healing and growth process. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so that feeling that was coming through you, 
that healing process that was coming through you, the expansive process that was coming through you, where did that end up taking you post the training that you were doing? Yeah. So I left and I left this job. I didn't have a backup plan. But I was becoming more and more spiritually awake, more in touch with myself, more, you know, beginning to kind of just flower my consciousness, my energy field. I, w I was becoming, uh, adding depth to who I was and I was showing up and I, and I could sense that uh, I was bringing more, uh, I was bringing more than just this kind of Z health knowledge. When I was with clients, I had all this love. I felt so sensitive. I just wanted to be sensitive to them. I wanted to care for them beyond gym stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and then you could say that this life coaching, um, because I, I was so dedicated to my own healing and growth, um, it started outpouring. Can I, I have a question. Yeah. What would happen when you'd start caring for people and they would be like, what the fuck are you doing caring for me? I'm not here for you to care for me. I'm here to be like a client of yours in the gym setting. I would just be sensitive to that. I would just shift and I would just like that. By caring for people, I mean like becoming people. I mean like yeah, yeah. being like whatever is needed. Whatever is like, needed. I love you. If you're feeling like that, yeah. I love that. Like I love that. Yeah. A lot of people get uh, spooked on, you know, altruism and just genuine good people. They don't, they don't mm -hmm. get it. People are such miserable pricks, you know, and uh, so it's, it's throws people off, I'm sure. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's well said. It's, uh, actually, quite often it happens when people come to the California and they're like, what is this like care thing that you, <laughs> that you do? Like you come from the East Coast to the, to the West Coast and well, sometimes uh, I, I have love yeah. in my heart. There's <laughs> love in people's hearts on the East Coast. You know, we do things. There is, of course. Yeah. Of course there is, yeah. I love the California chill. I'm all yeah, over yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, so, so, then, so then you would be with someone even distancing themselves from the initial care, and then you would just be with where they're at with that, and you'd say, I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, I have more to ask you about that in, later. Okay, let's re resume us um, where we were at. Okay. So... So I left and I left this job because I sensed that um, I was bringing more than just the Z Health skill set. And, um, uh, and I didn't know what I was gonna do, but, um, but there, was this out, there was this outpouring. Like in addition to at the gym, just in my life, it felt like there was, because I was supporting myself with so much dedication, I began, I, like, it's the only thing I wanted to do with people around me, you know? I, I became really sensitive to, to everyone around me as if they were part of my healing and growth process. And uh, so, so I was kind of like this organic life coach. I was kind of like that already. And then six months into my leap, uh, well, the cool thing I'll just share is things showed up. Things showed up to kind of support my leap. Uh, I'll tell you the two biggest ones. One was a living situation that was just really nice and cheap. Mm -hmm. And one was uh, uh, a life coach who was like the real deal. And he gave me six months of coaching for free. Wow. Yeah. Uh, if you know, his name, is, uh, I'll say his name is Dan Spinner. Um, mm -hmm. And he's just like this 70 year old, like master of life. Mm. Maybe he, someone to have on the show as well. Like, yeah. He also happens to be Mikey Siegel's from Consciousness Hacking, mm -hmm. his coach. Oh, great. Wow. And so, so with that coach and the living situation, it's like uh, I kind of felt like I was free falling after this leap, but things were kind of just showing up at the right time. And then uh, uh, eventually I made this post on Facebook. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm looking to offer like holding space, uh, which just means like being present with someone, mm -hmm. being present with, with what's, what's there and supporting them. And uh, so I made a post and I was like, I'm looking to do this as a service. And there's a lot of energy behind it too. Um, I was like, I think I can do this really well. Like if, if you're ready, like I think you'll transform. And then what happened was I had 30 sessions within a month. Damn. Yeah, with Facebook friends. Like 90 minutes. 90 session. minutes. Yeah. And 
And what does this entail? What, yeah. what is it? Well, I'm sorry, what is it? What, what do you do? I sit with them and get questions like that. And they're like, so what is this? And, then, <laughs> and I basically just wing it. Like, it feels like I had become support. Like, I had, that had mm. become very authentic. And so I would just wing it. Mm. And it would look different whether we go into emotions and I'm just like, give them some like solid love to some inner child that had been suppressed, like some emotional pain. Or maybe what they need is like, hey, you're a king, like, and just like empower them. And so mm. it could look different ways. But most of these sessions, these 30 sessions, um, felt powerful. They felt like they were working. And so eventually I started getting paid. And now I've been doing that professionally for a year. Make that money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So damn what a crazy like trajectory to get to where you're at today okay so and it, it actually deeply explains a lot of yeah of who you've become so 30 of them in a month you got the good housing situation got the good life coach and then just continue doing it for a year holding space for people and you would get everything from digging into the and how would, yeah, so this, you're not even doing the digging. You're holding the space, and then, and then whatever's coming up for them, you're with that. You're present with that. Mm -hmm. So they may wander themselves into the most deepest emotional traumas from their youth or transgenerationally, or they may wander themselves into needing to be the queen or the king, and you support wherever they are at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, we can't do this live because my brother told me not to talk about my mother and father on social media. So I can't, you know, I'd love to do this and talk about this relationship I had with my parents, but my brother said, don't. <laughs> so I can't. But there is, it does go back. There is, yeah. you know, this, I can't, you know, as much as, uh, you know, I want to say, oh, I've gotten over a lot of it. I know it's just still, it, it's still there. It exists. It, it, it comes out on, uh, you know, my ability to, um, you know, in, in, interact on certain things. What are your thoughts about someone like, that like is trying to like suppress, like his brother is trying to like suppress him from being able to talk about his parents? <laughs> This, this is what we're doing. We're already doing it. He's going to be pissed. He's going to be pissed. Let's, yeah, that, that, yeah, talking about, uh, yeah. And it's not, I'm not bad-mouthing my parents. I love them dearly. I learned to, to yeah. love. I learned about love through loving my parents. Yeah. And, uh, and that, 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 I was, that, that's I did beautiful. it myself, you That's know what I'm beautiful. saying? Yeah, so, uh, but as well, I'm aware that it, it's, it's still, it's hard. It does affect people, and uh, it is hard. It takes years of uh, shadow work and self-work and just self, you know, I want to, um, you know, beat this. I don't want to have this hate in my, in my heart. I don't yeah. want this hate yeah. here, so uh, yeah. I want to uh, fix it and be a better person. It feels really good to have you share. I'm um, glad that we're holding space. I want to take full advantage of this show and understand it. You said earlier, well, what, what are we doing? We're holding space now. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right, let me get involved in the show and uh, hold space. So great, Ori. This is fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Yeah, and I apologize earlier. We should also share the story. When I came in before we had even met, I asked Ori, uh, who do you think would win in a scrap between you and I? It's just a joke that I do often to people and throw some off. And in this case, yeah, Ori didn't quite know me, and uh, it might have uh, been. But I'm glad that we're holding space now. And yeah, I sincerely didn't mean to challenge you or anybody that I say that to. And uh, it's all in good fun. You'd kick my ass, Ori. <laughs> you do who win in the scrap? You. You'd kick my ass. I don't know if I have that in me, man. Yeah, I understand that now. <laughs> I understand that now. I am, I am, I, I'm sorry. It was beautiful reflecting on you connecting with you, 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 what you learned love through your loving your mom and dad and also just 
your parents. And I all, know what you're talking about. And, <laughs> I told and, you. And that. also just, you know, John o, which Stop! Is, which is Ron's Stop! brother. Stop! We don't know. I just want to say we we'll love, be right back after a word from our, our sponsor. sponsor. I'll kill this show and shut it off. Okay, okay. No. Okay. I just it's not okay. necessary. I, I was I was just I was just saying like there are situations where like families around other families as well, even mine, yours, other families that it can it's important to be able to talk about the things that we find most important to dig down and understand. And like, sometimes it can feel like hard when like someone within my family is trying to like, you know, maybe stop me from doing that. And so this happens actually quite frequently around the world. And so to get, be able to open up vulnerability, to open up to what lies at our deepest parts of our psyche is some of the most things, the things that make us most human. Yes, well said. Well said, brother. I love it. That's why you hold space. These, the, the deepest parts of our psyche are what makes us most human. And so holding space gets people to wander into those areas with you. Yes. Yes. I really appreciate the stuff that comes through you. I'm, I, f I feel like you are in many ways some, some that I, I feel so deeply, like live through you viscerally because I also um, feel like as a nerve ending of our collective consciousness, you are uh, doing work that I really resonate with. So, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. So then walk us through some of the, you gave us some of the examples, right? You're holding space. Like, what do people, what do, people do right away when they're just like, what, what's your like most common um, and your most outlier? Man, it's interesting because the truth is sitting with someone one-on-one -on -one feels um, like I'm still doing it, but I'm starting to get that feeling I got at the gym where I know there's something next, at least in addition. And so, like when you ask me that question, it's like not even, it's not what's been cooking recently. It's not been in the forefront of my mind. I, I still have that ability. I mean, it, it actually feels like um, I, integ so after a session supporting someone, th there's a transformation and then leaving that, I feel transformed. You know, after you heal your nervous system, you open to yourself, um, it feels like your own healing work. Yeah. And so I would just walk light post session and that process hasn't stopped. Um, it almost feels like each session gets integrated into my energy field. And then, um, wherever I go, it's like, that's, it's like their accolades, like these energetic accolades that that has happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, that's but, well said. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, an energetic accolade that you now have embodied into your essence because you've experienced that. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so now it might look a lot different than before. Like maybe now I really can just like sit quietly and like people can just like, it can, they can just very naturally, it can, uh, they can heal themselves maybe. And I'm just sitting here. Like you could say that Ron began to do that. Mm. It, we do. We do. We can uh, give us, ourselves, uh, you know, therapy along the way when we when we talk to people and just uh, that exchange, healing oneself. It, we, it, uh, I don't. I got nothing. It's yeah. We you do have do to that. do it. You have to do whatever it takes. And if you need to, and, and if you feel you want to sit down with somebody that you can genuinely trust, uh, you know, do whatever it takes. Yes. Uh, all it took me was about 36 years of uh, awareness and about $40,000 worth of cocaine. And I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a miracle of modern science. Oh, my gosh. So, Thanks for sharing. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. Say no to drugs, kids. Hmm. The, the, other, the other ways to... There sure are. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there is. Yeah. 
I like how real it just got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not, I don't, uh, I don't really have anything to hide in that sense. You know, I've been using drugs since I was 12 years old when I started with marijuana, you know, and that's about where it usually comes knocking on the doors of our children. I have a 11 and 13 year old niece that I'm uh, concerned with. I'd like to stare them away from that for as long as possible, right. including alcohol, you know, so, um, uh, you know, I, I understand there, there, there are other ways. But there's also, you know, go, don't go telling a, 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 a young girl who's just been, you know, uh, who lived a life being raped by her horny brothers. Uh, and t don't tell her, you know, don't try to, you know, psychoanalyze. And, you know, you're not going to do therapy. It's not going to fucking work. Years of therapy. Talk, you know, there's, there, there's, there's drugs out there for that. That's very painful. Don't, you know, there's a reason why these drugs are among us. That it, it also kill us. Yeah. You know, there's, when, 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 when the heroin people overdose, th that's what they ultimately want. So... You know, there's 8 billion people on the planet and there are so many ways to die. And there's some people that just don't fear that. And if they want to go out, they want to go out feeling good. It's a, a euphoric bliss and then it's over. So. I'm grateful for every I'm grateful I'm a survivor, but I have no regrets going out of my drug use. I'm glad that uh, I'm not a big heroin user, found it boring, the whole opioid thing, crystal meth. I don't want to stay up for a week. Ron loves where he goes during sleep. <laughs> and I do. Sleep is uh, a wonderful thing. Perhaps a brief exercise in death. If we really become self-aware of who we are on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, you will see a pattern of uh, personalities, if you will. A nicely glued, glued schizophrenia of sorts, you know, that's just uh, evenly out. It's even. And just uh, and ride those... Uh, you know, p those people on the brain of this machine, you know, that shares Ron Vargas. Ron Vargas's brain. Let's go into Ron Vargas's brain. <laughs> who we are, who we can be, and our maximum potential. Who else I can invite in? You know, people, there's lots of uh, that just don't want to come in right now, but I could uh, be a vehicle for beautiful strong-willed, uh, grateful people. So grateful to be in the situation that I have established in this body. And I don't, I'm, I'm enjoying this, who this is today, to be able to talk I'm picturing about my, I'm picturing my mom and my girlfriend like pissed that Ron's taking up my show. No, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is what the show is all about. And this is, and, and and I want and you know from watching the show, or I'm just that I don't I, I don't I've yeah. never talked as much as I do in the programs as I I, I am now. But yeah. what uh, your energy? It's you. <laughs> I blame you. Don't uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. don't say I want to hog the show. There's an energy here that uh, that allowed me to do that, and yes. that's through you. That's you. you, you this guy's a professional. Because you're here, Ron uh, went into the deepest he's gone about his own self on the on the show. So that's how I think it's a good good sure good, good way to frame it. Yeah, yeah feel yeah. Com comfortable in uh, talking about things as we, a, we we were talking about earlier. I won't bring it up, but you know I'm, I'm I stand firm on, <sighs> on that as well. It wasn't suppression. And these are sometimes the things that happen when you hold space. Is that like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you weren't expecting it. But there you go. You got a waterfall. 
What's your mom and sister's name? At least we should say hi to them. Yeah, let's say hello. Yeah. Oh, big shout out to Ori's mom. Big shout out to watching the show. Uh, Thanks for well, watching. We, we can we can say Morley and Asia. We can say that. Morley and Asia. Yeah. Morley and Asia. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll Thanks be quiet now. We can talk more about. Uh, you know, so so, so let's let's break down the 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 most commons and the outliers of what it gets explored when you hold space. Mm. When, when you say that, the thing that comes to mind is like, but wait, like now I'm interested in, um, uh, in working with groups and events. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what came through. And have fun with it, no? I'm, I'm seeing a, 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 a fun engagement. You know, this is kind of so, fun. Yes, yes. But, you, but were you curious about, like, examples of one-on-one -on -one sessions and what they were like? Is that what? Yeah, let's let's do that, and then we'll we'll walk our way into the larger size groups and events as well. Yeah. Okay. It really is like always different. It does feel that way. Um, you know. But it's sitting with a person and being sensitive to what wants to come through. Actually, sometimes, sometimes it would get on me. Like, you know, I've had some really cool clients who have really developed themselves, kind of like some people on your show and you guys. And um, sometimes the authentic flow of it is where it's kind of like they start supporting me. And that just feels true. And mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy to say, but um, I'm not... Yeah, yeah, you know, like the thing that comes to mind is this guy Dor, who lives at the Kohak house, the consciousness hacking house, and like half our sessions would be him uh, uh, supporting me in a sense. So mm. it's like we talked about energetic accolades, right? Mm -hmm. So he has these accolades of like this really smart, like successful, older guy in the world who's like done big business things. And like, I think he went to the Israeli army in like, so there was something there for me to integrate. And that's usually the case. If with two human beings, like we're gonna pick up some accolades along the way. It's not about, it's not like uh, I'm just like this absolute coach, you know? I hope that kind of answers. Oh yeah, that similarly happens on the program is that the person like shines at their best teaching about what they're caring about and inspiring other people. But also we get to learn so much we level up by listening to them and and yeah and give further on our synthesis yes yeah so that that does totally resonate so then get like give us the most you know give us the most common like thing that people go to uh, okay. also one of some of the outliers mm -hmm. yeah well it can, yeah so do you want more water by the way um yeah that'd Ron, be great you grab some? thank you thanks Ron. yeah Okay, yeah, so give us common and outliers. All right. So I would say, thanks, Ron. You're welcome. Thank you, brother. I had the camera. Hey. <laughs> so I would say the most common thing is like this kind of meeting the darkness thing because that's what I really like. It just feels healing and real. Mm. And so that can be grief like with me or like shame. And that might take like 40 minutes to gain the, the comfort and the, or maybe less nowadays. Um, but so maybe the most common is like some sort of emotional opening and like processing and like loving, you know, like us just holding that and caring. Uh, and that feels good. I think that can really, there's nothing like emotions, you know, in terms of feeling transformed and really good. But um, sometimes it can be just playful, you know, like um, I've had, you know, there's this one guy who was like, uh, you know, we were in his like business office and I was like, why are you scared to be intense? Like just intuitively, I knew that was, there was like a lion, but like he wasn't expressing it. And so he got up and he pushed me over the chair. I fell to the ground. 
and there was a space there that that could happen you know yeah. we put, um, so you know whether the however the being wants to expand whether there wants some energies want to express you know there was a woman whose brothers whose brother was killed by the Cuban government like decades ago and she has this like rage like this absolute anger and um, what I got her, and, and now she has all these health issues and anxiety but what I got her to do in a session was to find those energies, feel them with me, like get to it, go there, and then share what the message of them is. So for example, like, mm -hmm. and, and you can get a really clean like expression of the message, right? Because maybe like, maybe like on the surface, because I journaled so much, I got good at like distilling like the heart messages, like the essence, the undistorted messages of emotions and energies. So maybe before doing that distillation, it might be like, oh yeah, what I want to say to the Cuban government is like, fuck you, motherfucker. But, um, but maybe after it's like, you're not helping. And then like some really like mm. juicy like gaze that just like shares them. And then, um, so. Um, Undistorted messages of emotion, yeah. 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 Um, do you write poetry? What's that, Ron? Do you write poetry? Do you, you know, you did the journal? You, you're talking about journals? I've written poetry uh, sporadically. More of a journaler. I do like writing poetry, but I don't do it that much. What does it, what's the difference between um, the two, the examples that you just gave there? Sometimes it may be like we go with this initial gut instinct of doing something like raging. Is that an undistorted message of emotion? Or if you were to hold space with me and we were to get to that point, you know, what is it exactly? Where did that come from? Be there with it and then come again. It would be less distorted. What do you mean? I don't know. If I so like sometimes that initial outburst that we have of emotion if you would hold space with us and like I'm curious what emotion you have right now like what's the energy because I feel something I feel something kind of dense I feel that more than the words you're speaking because I'm so sensitive and so mm. I'm feeling curious about it mm. yeah mm. I don't know what the denseness is it's definitely felt like a, like reconnecting to all that is several times throughout the show to kind of, yeah, to kind of put myself into the oneness several times throughout the show because that's how I feel when I'm around you. Like I'm able to tap into that deeper, more frequent. So I wonder what the denseness is too then. I don't Should know. I try to intuitively read you? Sure, yeah. Okay. Um, it's very deep, like it's like, uh, maybe like a hurt. Um, This is just something, a story, but like, I have this image of like, a kid who didn't get what he wants. I, I, I don't, I barely know myself. I'm trying to learn about myself every single day. So this may have something to do with it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we can say things like that like yeah. something that's deep something that hurts something that is like a kid not getting what they want and it can be like pretty applicable to like a lot of people right yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I appreciate you going there a little with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a it's a it's a fun thing i mean like to be able to practice like you said that 
intuiting through eye gazing. Is that a major component of it, that you stay eye to eye locked with the person you're holding space with? Yeah, just to try to like, just to try to read like what their eyes are saying. There have been some sessions where like the whole thing, or, or at least like the culmination is like this reading of like all these feelings and who knows like how spot on, like you said, like we don't even know what we are. Like we just have these energies and you could say they're collective energies, but, um, but yeah, this, it can be really healing to, to be seen in these energies, you know? Yeah. Sh should we keep going? Sure. What time? Yeah. 55. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good sure, you mean keep, go can, keep going, keep going in the unpacking of what we were <clears throat> doing between um, us on like what we thought was dense or what, where we were just at with the eye contact and what you do in the sessions? Which one of those? The first. The first one, what was dense? Okay, interesting. Yeah, I... Um, yeah, I, w I would like to as well. I'm, let's see where it goes. Okay, so like, <laughs> so what if you allow yourself to go back to that sense of being heavy with me? Okay, all right, let's do it. All right. Wow, it already doesn't feel as good. I don't know why. Got it. I yeah. like feeling light a lot. Mm. Yeah. Well, dude, you're talking to the heaviness king. I've spent a lot of time... <laughs> Um, surrendering to heaviness if you okay. want to let's surrender to heaviness okay yeah. all right let's do it okay <laughs> you're bracing yourself. yeah yeah man yeah okay all right where do we go from here okay so I'll just share what I'm noticing which is that I really feel my body in the chair right now like I was not feeling my body in the chair that much earlier. I was feeling kind of more like light and now I feel, yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so what's it like to start to let yourself feel heavy? It's, it feels like I'm still clinging to the like lightness, like I'm still clinging to feeling light. What would it be weird if you allowed yourself to get all emotional on your show? No, I'm super down for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've done it before, but right. we, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Just allowing the energy to take you mm -hmm. you know like okay okay what do you do when you go into the denseness when you go into that where do you go how do you do that um I just maintain my breathing and give up everything else. Okay. So, yeah, like almost like you let yourself drown. Okay. Like you're nothing but a breath and you're just allowing um, this emotion to have its way with you. Okay. Looking good, keep, keep it up. It's really healthy to grieve, to grieve like this. Um, and uh, how does it feel to be seen by seen in this? I feel like it's important. So. There's not a lot of 
room in our s- culture for this yeah. socially. Yeah, yeah, correct. <sighs> but right now there is. Yeah. Yeah, the first things that come up when I go to that density, when I'm in that state of breath and density, it is like, you know, who who was who was I growing up? You know, what inputs did I take in from my family and my environment, from the genetics as well as from the environment? <clears throat> yes. To become who I am now. And then what do I not know about myself regarding that, all, all those stimuli that I don't know about? Right. And if I learn about them, that they can help unleash me at my fullest better. Yes. Do you feel this heaviness at all being digested by us? You feel like there's... Yeah. Yeah. As we talk about it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I live for that. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. So creating the space that makes it easy for people to be with you in the process of digesting density. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I feel like we were just tapping in. We were just tapping in, yeah. But uh, thank you for going there because that can be hard to do for some people. But I know you've worked on yourself a lot. so. And we can um, also revisit this another um, time down the line where we just start the episode by um, diving into density mm. with maybe um, Ron. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, that could be interesting. All right. Um, let's let's um, let's visit the. We did um, a bit on the one-on-one side. What about when it happens one to many, and also at events, as well? Yeah. Um, so, this holding space. It feels like the coolest thing about it is that I'm like a vessel for it, more than anything else. Not a coach, not all. I can be those expressions as this more faceless vessel that can become what's needed. And um, there's a sense of being with someone one on one, the vessel kept developing. Like I would have all these, like, people talk about Kundalini awakenings. I would have these energetic openings, and I would have all this breath holding, like, exercises that would just happen. Like, it's almost like my body knew its own yoga that was, like, emerging through me. And like this quote unquote vessel would just transform to be a better and better space holder. And so then there was a sense, okay, being one on one with someone is beautiful, but I can feel that there, I can hold more. There's this capacity here to hold more. And so I had two cool 15 person sessions. I, I did one at a church uh, in Palo Alto, and I did one at the Consciousness Hacking House for my birthday. Uh, and they were both really awesome. And um, that was a fun exploration to hold maybe some heaviness with a group uh, and maybe, maybe lead some connection games and things like that. And so that's one thing. That's one thing that's also on the frontier, just like being with groups and playing with that. Sometimes I... Sometimes I, my dream is just to just like, just to be there and just hold space without even talking. And like, people don't even have to look at me. Like they can just, like, remember that party uh, at the end of Awaken Future Summit? Mm. I remember just sitting on the floor and kind of meditating. But when I meditate, it's not like, okay, boundary, like, let me like attune to this. No, it's like, uh, it's like, really mm. just like opening to the space mm-hmm. and like holding it mm. so so in terms of 
the, what's next from the one-on-one -on -one thing, it's working with groups and also just like holding events, if you will. Just like being with the whole thing and just like mm. interacting with it as if it were a session, which is kind of funny to say, but. I love that. Yeah. It's a big organism. Yes. And the different components of the organism in many ways are the humans that are in attendance and the way that they're interfacing with each other, the yes. relationships between them. Yes. And so when you are there, like at Awaken Futures, like behind the front desk tables, and you're standing there all like, I'm here. And like that's what you give off to people is like, I'm here. And then they'll see that and they have the potential to engage with you and at that point then for wherever they need, wherever they're at, and it varies between the people that come up to you, that you can then engage them and hold space for them at an event right? and help the trajectory of that component of the organism. Yes. I love that. Yes. That's great. There's so much good with that. Like that, why don't we have that more at events? It's kind of like the space holders of events. I love that. Yeah. Ah, so that's one of the next <laughs> oriholdingspace.com's uh, availability. So Ori's going to put That's what's been that. marinating. Yeah, that's that, good. I like that. That container, which, is, which I think is going to be showing up more in our future. It's going to be more of a real thing that's not under the radar. I think it'll be less under the radar. More people will know about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like a holding space... Should the holding space area be very easily visible so I will know exactly where it is at an event? Or do you want it to be baked, <laughs> baked more, um, uh, l less? These are the questions yeah, yeah, we yeah. need to be asking. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed that question. So teach us, conspicuous or inconspicuous, which one is better for... Speaking of which, I have a question. You should solicit your service to uh, law enforcement to I interrogate suspected criminals. You can, instead of... Uh, <laughs> this is awful, by the way, this suggestion. <laughs> it's totally devil's advocate. You know, but, you know, you could interrogate these people by holding space, and they would just willfully... You know, start from the bottom where it all comes from, and this, and then, of course, I ended up, you know, stabbing her. They would commit and confess to the crime. No, is, is that not? This uh, I could mean, it work for that? You think? I would just be interested to like evolve. I don't want to interrogate anyone. Like, I would just it's be not, like, yeah, non interrogation. Yeah. I would just want to raise the vibe by. Yeah. You do. That's that's what I'm saying. There's a vibe there that. You know, it, it allows me to surrender. Whereas maybe the old method is this like hardcore interrogation in that setting. Maybe there's space for uh, someone to come in that is better at holding space to engage with someone that may have committed a crime and, mm. to, and to raise, like you said, the consciousness in that environment to where the person feels like they actually want to work through what happened. Uh, yeah. However, when they, what they've done is going to send them to jail for the rest of their life. Maybe. They're going to be a little apt to or, uh, or, really or to be a liar. Not. Maybe not. Yeah. They doesn't necessarily have to. There's all kinds of factors, you know. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. The things. Yeah. So then, okay, let's talk about this. On one side, we have the conspicuous placement of the holding space people at an event. Right. So they're very visible. Yeah. On the other side, we have kind of like, I don't know, like what would it look like if it was inconspicuous? Like just some person kind of hanging out and being present. How would it look like? Yeah, tell, tell us about this. And which one do you think is good? Should we, how can we test these? That's a great question. Yeah. So I feel like up until now, I've been embodying inconspicuous a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been going to all kinds of events and exploring this. I drove to LA to like go to a documentary screening and like support their cause, but also explore this. Mm -hmm. And I'm, um, and I went to uh, like a march for the climate change, mm -hmm. and just different things. So up till now, it's been inconspicuous, um, but I do think it's of of value to have a place in the world when you're doing this kind of work, um, and for people's conscious minds to 
to know about it. Um, some people that really inspire me are these like spiritual heavyweights, like this guy Sadguru, who has yeah, we love you know him. him. We love him, yeah. So uh, if you go spiritual to, heavyweight, yeah, these, there's these like yeah. enlightened sages out, like Alma, the hugging saint. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. uh, do you know about her? Uh -uh. What's her name again? Alma, A M M A. A M M A. Yeah, cool. I would call her a heavyweight <laughs> as well. Spiritual heavyweights, interesting. Um, like and so, that. so you better believe, like, if you're in Alma or Sadhguru's, like, quote unquote, field, mm. like that, there's something there. Like, it means something. Um, yeah. Um, and so, but they would be uh, conspicuously doing it. Yeah, yeah. They have a place in the world, like an official place. They're not do They're not under the radar about what they're doing. Totally. When you're in their field, it's evident that there is something happening between them and the other people that are in that field that is about raising the consciousness. Yeah. And why would we ever carry ourselves in a way that isn't that? Because everywhere I go now, I'm trying to carry the most light with me all the time. Mm -hmm. And it emerges out of all of the actions Today, for an hour and a half of working out, laying out in the grass, and get, like talking to people on the run, all the stuff that I was doing, that people were lit up mm. in their engagements with me about everything in life. Mm -hmm. And it was just so fun how we can do, like, why would we ever not do that? We are a direct mirror our worldview and our mindset directly mirrors into civilization so if we are agitated upset pissed off we're going to encounter that essence in the exterior world and if we are happy light all that stuff we're going to encounter and spread that the butterfly effect law of attraction so many of these ways of putting it why would we ever do the other one the it's, other one, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even make, it doesn't make sense. Like we want to train ourselves to, like you said, Sadhguru, Amma, that spiritual heavyweight. But we also want to not take on so much from other people that we don't have our own, that it can off ground ourselves. Sometimes with the spiritual heavyweights, it's really hard to like off ground them but unground them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, gl I'm glad that, you, that you've been even traveling as well to events to explore what it looks like to be doing this. And you said you were doing it, you were doing it inconspicuously. Yeah. Okay, you were doing it in like a more hidden way just present but not announcing it holding space sign yeah exactly yeah well you were doing that at awaken futures too inconspicuously i would say so yeah okay and you'd say that some of the spiritual heavyweights do it conspicuously um yeah and just in general like in our culture in our society whoever is like leading like um my experience of it is anywhere you go the space is being held it's like there's a consciousness to that place. And usually, culturally, like it's like the speaker or like the person running the thing, you know? But my experience is that that doesn't have to be the case. Mm hmm That it can be found around the event as well, not with the non-speakers. Yeah, that's Yeah, great. so it's like maybe a person on stage is, is leading a talk or something. And then, in a sense, they're holding space because their consciousness um, everyone in the room is kind of like uh, absorbing it. Like everyone's swimming in their space to an extent. Yes. And I think that, like you said, I think this can be done conspicuously and inconspicuously probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, did we show them the image at least throughout of um, Ori holding space? 
there? Yeah, it's sorry. all good. No, it's all good. We can just. I'm sorry. Did you tell me there was an image there and yeah. I totally forgot about it? No, it's all good. It's all good. Just Let's find um, it. Show it now. Well, we can. We can't just not. Yeah, show yeah. It. It's just and in. Uh, it's just in the Ori Shapiro folder. It's in, we'll bring. We'll yeah, bring. We'll yeah, bring it up. It's awful. I mm. feel bad now. No, it's cool. Um, it, it's it's the same thing that's visible. It, on. Where did you put it? Clips. Clips. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's a still image. Yeah, in just the Ori Shapiro folder. Mm. Ah, oh, there were three. Ah, oh, that's awful. No, it's all good. Yeah, the, the images are literally the ones that are on the website too, and that's again for everyone. That's OriHoldingSpace.com. But yeah, Ron. Yeah, these, yeah. these images. Yeah, here. they're nice. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. It's it's what Ori does in the yeah, and here's some cool testimonials. I'm sorry, Ori. I didn't know that. Really. Where was my head at? There was assets, and we didn't run them during the show. It's all. It's all good. Sorry. Yeah, that's why we, we got them now. We got yeah, them now. I'm losing my. I'm. I'm. I'm losing my mind. I'm afraid. No worries. You know what? When we when we when we have you back, we can also bring on other leaders in the space mm. and that'll be really interesting mm. yeah yeah we'll do a little round table on holding space and spiritual development conscious evolution yeah yeah mm. yeah 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 cool okay um do you feel like we covered well we have to teach yeah. um feel, yeah this yeah. feels good feels i mean, good too yeah yeah okay Okay, cool. Um, let's ask you a couple quick questions on the way out. All right. Um, do you think that we come from anywhere before birth into the earth suits? And then do you think we go somewhere after death? Uh, I think I'm living in a reality that, where that is likely. And maybe all perspectives can be true. Mm. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, maybe the, the could potentially be countered if like you know are we you know that's the whole thing of like is there a cow that's currently orbiting around the sun like near the orbit of mercury or whatever right, right? am i a butterfly dreaming of being a man yeah so, so I, I mean you know so the whole yeah. like can everything be true thing is like can it yeah so uh, so what you just offered mm -hmm. it feels true like based on what i've been seeing and doing in the past year or whatever but if you asked me that five years ago it would have felt completely untrue okay so the idea is that all potential out of the possibility space is so infinite that there is a cow orbiting a star by mercury somewhere yeah. is that the thought? i don't know about that but it feels like <laughs> it feels like um somehow like i have shifted into a reality that's different like where what you offered feels like it's true, and maybe there's other people watching this or in the world where they think that's not true. Mm -hmm. And maybe that is not true and will s continue to be not true in their like timeline, if you will. Now, are all possible expressions of the simulation, um, including the cow one, um, there? Maybe not, I'm okay. not sure. And then what's the most controversial belief you hold? Mm. That's a good one. It's a controversial belief I hold. Um, probably like something related to like magic being real and like kind of these more out there concept that we kind mm -hmm. of teetered. Um, probably something like that. In general, I'm not big on beliefs, you know? I'm just like, I, ha I live with a lot of I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then do you think we're alone in the cosmos? No. At the least, we're not alone if you factor like other dimensions, like interdimensions and stuff, but... What are in those other dimensions? You, I mean, you could call them aliens, you could call them beings, you could mm. call them energy forms, you can call them spirits. And I haven't even done that much exploring relative to other people, but it does feel like there's something there. Do you yeah. think we're in a simulation? Um, 
I think we're in something interesting. I think we're in something like intelligent and like fascinating and like mysterious. Um, <laughs> so pick your word, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Re recently, I've I really like the word God. Yeah. You know, I'm not religious, but me too. Yeah. 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 I do too. I really like it too. Yeah. Nice. It does a good job at summarizing all that is. Yes. Yeah. Well, God is just dog spelled backwards. I just want yeah. to remind you. <laughs> you know. This is true. Well, last question. What is the most beautiful thing in the world? Mm. Something about sharing love. Like sharing love with other eyeballs or like other aware entities. Like there's something there. And like in our simulation, sometimes there can be really elegant ways that that unfolds. Um, but just that like that sense of, yeah, something, something about sharing love with other consciousnesses. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. It's interesting how Ori described it as sharing love with other consciousnesses and other people that have said love just say love. Mm. And you say sharing love with other consciousnesses. Yeah. yeah, love in its truest form is the beauty in it all. You know, the most beautiful thing. What you know, is, is that, that that love. Like last night, I was talking, to him, and it was there was a girl that only if, there was a few moments in the conversation where we had that connection of love. You know, that sincere uh, in the eyes, you you see it best, but. Um, you know, and it was no, no biggie. It was love, good stuff. Right. And uh, it just, but it only happened to be, you know, a few moments in the overall maybe 10, 12 minute conversation. Got it. Ori. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. So nice to be on here. Mm. Thank you. Wow. So nice. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Ori. Thanks, man. Keep up the good work, brother. Okay. We love you very much. Likewise. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Get talking more about holding space with your friends, your families, coworkers, people online on social media. Let's get holding more space around the world. Let's do this, everyone. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and also check out the links in the bio, oriholdingspace.com, also Ori's Facebook page. Check those out. Huge shout out to Ron Vagas for producing and directing. Thank you very much, Ronnie. And also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the people in your communities that are building great things. Support them. Support Simulation if you believe in us. Our links are below. The Patreon's down there. The PayPal is down there. Also, our link to our merch store. You can design merch. You can get paid and you can spread thought-provoking messaging around the world. That's UB. Check that link down, down there. And also, build the future manifest your dreams into the world we love you very much thank you for tuning in and we will see you soon peace peace Woo!